Fractal design cases have inspired modders all over the world who have built some amazing systems like this dark side themed case by George Priscellus showcasing the spacious internals in the Define S, or Metallic Acid, a mini ITX system by Justin Olson featuring a white, black, and red color scheme and a super clean layout in the Define Nano S. There are a ton more awesome builds like these on Fractal Design's modding series page, so check it out via the sponsor link in this video's description and get inspired for your next project. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is a case video. This is the Enermax Equilence Silent Case. The model is ECA3510. So I'm gonna set up a system in here, give you guys some feedback on what I think of it. Now the price right now for this case, if you look at Amazon or Newegg, is about $110. It was $106 on Newegg for some reason. And Enermax has tried to uh, cram some high-end features in here, including uh, a backlit LED panel, a four millimeter panoramic tempered glass, providing panoramic views, uh, triple radiator support, a power supply shroud, of course, which has become standard in modern cases, and some silence uh, features, some silent features, I guess I should say, including sound dampening. But let's begin by, of course, taking it out of the box. Let's get in here for a quick closer look and oh my gosh, the reflections. Many, many reflections from this case. Uh, now it's made of a steel frame with a pretty typical ATX layout. You have a single tempered glass panel on this side, which is a fairly dark smoked tempered glass piece. It's held on by four uh, little metal thumb screws. They do have Phillips heads in them and these th screws are used not just there, but they're also holding on the opposite side panel as well. This side panel will just kind of pop out from the side. I'll show you that in just a minute. On the front, you actually have an extruded acrylic piece. So even though it is not tempered glass, uh, as you can probably see right here, very reflective on both, but actually has a pretty nice matching look. Uh, you have an Enermax logo on the, here on the side that will light up, I believe, in red once we get the system turned on. And here for front I.O., we got a big old power button, reset button. Uh, this is a three position fan controller that will be indicated by the lights right there. And then uh, a strange addition of plugs on all these ports here, but uh, these are protective plugs. I don't know if you wanna keep them in all the time to keep dust out, maybe. Possibly, but a couple USB 3.0 ports, uh, mic and headphone jack. Yes, these are jacks, not buttons. They also have little plugs in them. Uh, and then a couple USB 2.0 ports there as well. No type C uh, and no 3.1 Gen 2, unfortunately, but at least a full layout. And I do like having four ports up here rather than just a couple USB 3. Tempered glass side piece again is held on by four thumb screws and it is just a single piece of tempered glass with four holes in it. Um, this has been pretty standard for 2017, but we've just been shown like the Define R6 recently that has at least sort of an enhanced tempered glass piece. So I'm starting to feel like this is getting a little bit less desirable, but again, a fairly dark tint on that as well. That will actually let you see the inside of the case, Enermax logo down here at the bottom, uh, and then we've got standard ATX layout, pre-installed uh, motherboard standoffs, which is nice. Not a lot of rubber grommets in here for cable management. There's a couple up here for uh, PC, uh, for your CPU supplemental power and possible fans and, the, and that kind of thing. And then over here on the right side, there's a bracket. You can use this to mount uh, hard drives. You can use this to actually mount fans. They've set it up so you could set up a radiator here. Although I feel like that would be kind of weird because there's no pass through on the back here for the air to flow out of. Um, that said though, let's get this side panel off as well. And here you can see with those two screws off, it'll just kind of fold out just a little bit. Reminds me a little bit of Cooler Master's uh, recent Master Box series of cases. The side panel itself does have a sound dampening material on the other side. Fairly reasonably sturdy steel. And then this uh, catch lip down at the bottom, which is what allows you to position it on the side of the case and lets it kind of hang there like so. Uh, we'll leave this off for now. At the back of the case here, we can see our exhaust fan, 120 or 140 millimeter mount there. Knockout for the rear panel I.O. You have a total of seven expansion slots. Uh, no vertical GPU mount there, and this is one of the types of cases that is flush in the back with the GPU mounting solution. So there's this sort of uh, pop-out piece back here, and that is where you actually screw in uh, your graphics cards or other expansion cards that you might put in there. 
At the bottom is our power supply shroud and our Max logo on the side of that. And I thought it's interesting that they again decided to put a couple grommets there at the back for routing up probably HD audio and USB connections, but no grommet here on this little pass through, which uh, would be the most visible one. And that's where cables would come up probably for your graphics card. So I would like to see a grommet right there to be perfectly honest. There's another look at that uh, rear bracket on the back. Uh, again, mounts for 3.5 inch hard drives, mounts for 120 millimeter fans. So you can actually put a couple of those right there. Um, and that would actually help to block some of the visibility of the cables going back behind this piece because that is one of the complaints um, from a couple of the reviews that I sort of did some research on before doing this video was you can really get a good look at uh, all the cables back through those brackets and right here we can see the pre-installed cables uh, with USB, HD audio, uh, USB 3, USB uh, 2. Front panel connectors are all black cabling so that is nice. Uh, you do have a bit of rainbow blah on the uh, USB 2 and HD audio, which is uh, a little disappointing, but those are pretty common to see in computer cases. And then beyond that down here, you got a total of six three pin fan headers, and that is uh, to connect up up to six fans to your three position fan controller at the front. The fans that are included are Intermax, uh, well, there's a 140 at the back and then two 120s included in the front, and they do have dual use cables, so you can connect them to a three pin motherboard connector, or you can just plug them in straight to Molex. I don't recommend just plugging in the Molex though, because that will run the fans at full speed. Beyond that, a uh, fair amount of cable tie down points back here. No clearly defined sort of vertical running position for your main 24 pin cable. So that's another thing I would like to see. And you can kind of tuck them in here, but again, that'll be fairly visible from the front of the case. Got a couple SSD trays here held on by more of these uh, same thumb screws that the side panels are held on with. Would have liked to have seen these be captive thumb screws. They are not, but um, the SSD trays are all metal and can be removed like so, and you can position a couple of them back there for some additional storage. Here at the bottom, uh, there are two more uh, little drive trays, uh, which have some plastic mounts in them. Uh, the accessories are included in this, in this one. Again, these will support uh, 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives. Here's a look at the accessories that come in the box. Uh, you get a product manual, one long Velcro strap and one short Velcro crow strap, very specifically. Uh, three zip ties. Uh, they do give you a speaker, uh, which is these are nice to have if you don't have one, I guess. Uh, some longer screws here for mounting radiators and that kind of thing. Uh, you get a couple Enermax magnets. These are refrigerator magnets. There you go. Just leave them on there. It'll be right under, underneath the 8-bit LeVar Burton. And then, of course, uh, extra screws for everything else. And they do include a metal nut here for tightening your motherboard standoffs. Also a nice... Thing to have, so I'd say a good selection of accessories from Enermax. All right, the power supply mounts uh, right down here at the bottom. And uh, while we're down here, take a look at those feet. Those are some interesting feet design. Yeah, they're, they're made of plastic, but there's some rubber underneath them. And the power supply does have a little dust filter here, which is not the easiest to get out. Okay. Dust filter, not a, a decent dust filter, but not very easy to actually remove. It just, it locks in there. And then, cause the feet go all the way across the bottom. It's, it's like you really need two hands or anyway, but I'd rather have the dust filter than not. Attempting to remove our front panel here to take a look at mounting points for the radiators. Now they're pre zip tied in here. You're definitely not going to leave them that way. You're going to want to release all these and everything. Also, the front panel is permanently connected to the front I.O., which means if you want to pull it all the way off, you're going to need to unplug all that. Ta-da! There is our front panel. It's all the connections up in there. And we can also see a little bit more sound dampening on here, but again, another one of the cases for 2017 that has completely solid front piece right there. So all of your airflow in the front is gonna be coming in through these vents on the side and the small gap at the bottom, which is also there so you can grab 
front panel to pull it off if you want to. So um, probably not going to be the best airflow, especially depending on where you mount these fans. It comes with two pre-mounted 120 millimeter fans there at the front. You can do up to three and you can do a 360 millimeter radiator up here. One thing I might consider doing just out of the box if you're not going to install a radiator up there is move these fans from the outside here to the inside. Uh, mount them right there if you're not going to have anything else that might conflict with them mounted over here on the cross beam piece. That would give a little bit more space underneath this panel uh, just for airflow so that those fans could possibly be a little bit more effective. And I thought there's another dust filter up here. Last part I haven't really talked about yet is up here on top. And here you have a removable panel. So I uh, got some more sound dampening on that. So if you're less concerned about airflow, pop that on top, magnets hold it in place reasonably well, uh, and remove it if you would like to let more air out the top or you've got a couple more mounts up here so you can do uh, up to 360 millimeter radiator up here or two 140 fans or a 280 millimeter radiator. Of course, uh, that's all gonna be very dependent on the motherboard you have installed here how large the heat sinks and whatnot are on there and how thick your radiator is uh, as far as support there goes. But uh, good to have support in both the front and the top for a couple configurations like that. If it's really missing anything, I'd say it's uh, maybe a secure location or a pre-installed location for a pump because there is a bit of space here up at the front of the system, but no, no pre-drilled mounts or anything like that. All that said, let's go ahead and get a system installed. So after some further explanation, I just wanted to demonstrate sort of the quirkiness and maybe some uh, missed potential here for this cross beam support section that they have at the back. Now, first off, I thought these were 3.5 inch mounts on that. They actually are not. They're 2.5 inch mounts. So they're the bottom mounts for the SSD. And you could put one right there and then you can put another one down here. Now, bear in mind, this would put the business end where you'd put the plugs on, on the left side here, uh, which would probably not be ideal. You'd have to wrap them around to go back behind there to get behind in the cable management area. Uh, you could flip it, of course, and go this way over here, but um, if you have fans in the front, and as you can see, I've switched these 120 millimeter fans over to the inside of the case so that they have a little bit more breathing room inside the front panel. It's just, it's just doesn't seem quite ideal. Also, you could easily have fit three or maybe even four 2.5 inch drive mounts along here. I feel like if this was uh, designed a little bit differently. Finally, again, there's 120 millimeter fan mounts that are kind of slot spaced so you can shift them up and down a little bit there. And I think that's meant so you can take some flashy fans and put them there that maybe light up or something like that. But again, just a very impractical position for it because behind that, you just have a solid flat wall of the uh, other side panel of the case. So you're not gonna be pulling air from or pushing air to anywhere, especially if you were considering mounting a radiator or something like that, at least not without modding the rear side panel to provide some additional ventilation. So it seems like there could have been a lot more done with this piece right here to provide additional mounting points for SSDs or just to ignore the fan mounts right there. That really is not necessary. All right guys, got the system installed in here. And in case you're wondering, this is the same system that I installed recently in the Define R6. And I'll put links to the various components in the description down below. It is an Intel based system. Uh, and I'm just gonna power this on right now. And that will give us our first look, for example, at the uh, accent lighting in red, the Enermax logo on the side here, as well as uh, there's some back lighting on the uh, ports up there for USB and mic and headphone jack. I will say it's actually blending in quite nicely right now simply because the Gigabyte Z370 motherboard that we're using also has some red accents on it. I will point out though that uh, this is just a single color for the accent lights on the case itself. So for anyone who's interested in RGB uh, theme or something like that, you are stuck with red there. So you're gonna need to pick colors that match with that or are complementary to it. Now, as far as silence goes, I will say uh, this gets an initial thumbs up from me simply because the included fans, uh, the three of them, two 120s in the front and the 140 in the back, I've routed and connected all up to the three position fan controller. And right now that is in full speed mode or the fastest fan mode for those. So even with that, it's very quiet and I can even turn it down further to make this a really silent running system. I will say again that I was glad that I moved these two front fans from the uh, initial position they were in inside the case just to provide a little bit more airflow intake to them uh, through this front panel here. And even with them positioned there, it does look like you might still have enough room for the fans and a radiator if you were using a slim version. 
Now the biggest shortcoming, uh, practically speaking of this case, I think is just something that I've kind of come to take for granted with, with cases and that is uh, dust filtration and there's no dust filter on the front intake of this case. I think that's a pretty significant miss and also something that Intermax probably could have uh, accounted for just by simply including uh, a magnetic mesh dust filter that could go over the uh, 240 or even all the way down to the 360 millimeter fan configuration that is potentially available up there. With the fans moved back here, that's definitely something that you could easily pop on there. And those are sold separately. So if you are interested in this case, that's something I would definitely recommend uh, getting as an add-on item. Uh, just put the fans like I've done here, pop a mesh, mesh dust filter on there at the front and you will be in a much better situation in three months or six months when it comes to the dust buildup in your system. So to sum up the cons for the Intermax Equilence case, I think would be definitely this rear panel back here, just a little bit lacking when it comes to what you can mount there, and also a little bit too open when it comes to actually providing some protection for the cables that you might have routed back there. Second would be the front intake up here. First off, it's blocked off by the solid front panel. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more airflow there. And then of course, the lack of a dust filter is one that really stands out to me. Third is just gonna be the price at $110. I feel like the feature set that you get with this case is good, but there's definitely competitive options in the say $80 range when you look at stuff like Fractal's Meshify C for example, or some of the higher end uh, NZXT S340 cases. Not a bad case by any stretch, but I would like to see the price come down a little bit. Overall, the build quality is really solid, really silent operation out of the box, thanks to some extra foam padding, as well as some pretty decent fans that they've included in there that pair up nicely with the fan controller. And then uh, overall, I think I think it's a pretty good looking case. I like that the acrylic on the front matches with the tempered glass side panel. And as you can see with the system I've set up here pretty quickly, uh, you can get yourself a nice looking build without too much effort. So I'd like to say thank you to Enermax for sending the Equilance case over for me to take a look at. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments if this is a case that you would consider or if there's other cases that stand out to you that you feel would be a better option. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.